Praise the Lord. Dr. Uzo here. I want to give a popcorn teaching on five reasons why you must exercise your God-given spiritual authority and walk in your kingdom dominion power. If you don't exercise your authority, if you don't exercise power, if you don't exercise the unction to function, then you will not walk in your covenant rights and privileges in Christ. You will not realize your full covenant potentials and do exploits for the kingdom. You will not enjoy the blessings of the Lord. The enemy will keep you defeated perpetually. You will be crying. You will have all kinds of problems and mayhem and you will not realize your kingdom power. In fact, you become a miserable Christian. You'll be fighting warfare every time, on, uh, every time and at all times unless you realize and understand true revelation what I'm teaching this early morning. And I want to do it briefly and quickly. First of all, you know, what I normally hear from people who got born again from either witchcraft or cultism or from the dark side is that Christians have no power. And they keep on saying it again and again and it got to me. I'm like, well, God has given us all this power in the scripture. Jesus has given us authority. Authority, by the way, is the right to exercise power. Now, Jesus has given us not just that, he even gave us the anointing, the raw power. In fact, in the Latin and Hebrew, as well as Greek, there are at least seven translations of power. Remember, it is said that the kingdom is not in words, but in power. Well, Satan do not hear any other language than the language of force and power and authority and dominion. And if you don't exercise yours, you will exercise his. And I will explain. Listen. First of all, there is raw power, which is Kratos. Then there is authority, which we define as exousia. Then there is the dynamic or dynamite power, which is called dunamis. Then there is energy which is the ability to do work. They call it energies. Then there is might. There is strength. There is potency or potential. Where we get the word potential or potential energy or, or potent. Now, if you look at this, you discover that God gave us variety more than we can even use. Unfortunately, the children of the kingdom do not know how to exercise this power. Even when they are attacked, even when God allows spiritual attacks, they still don't wake up. You see, a lot of spiritual attacks are actually wake up call from people who are sleeping, who are in doldrum, who think that they will get it the easy, lazy way. Remember what the Lord says. He says from the time of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom suffereth violence and men and women of violence take it by force. So if you think you cruise your way as a believer, the easy, lazy, lackadaisical way, all well that ends well, ain't going to happen because Satan do not grant deliverance. Satan is very wicked. People don't even know the nature of Satan. That's why they are complacent. That's why they say things like, eh, you always talk about the devil. Eh, why, when are you going to talk about God? Because God is not your problem. God is not your afflictor. God is not the one that is causing your misery. The Bible says God does not afflict willingly the children of men. God is the solution. God is a father. God protects us. In fact, he overprotects us. That's why if we are not careful, we become complacent, easy, lazy Christians who care about nothing because they have never been tested. They have never been tried. Their faith, their authority, their dominion, their power. They don't even know if they have the power until it's tested. Like Michael Tyson, uh, uh, Mike Tyson always say, 
he said look everybody has a plan until they get hit until a lot of people get it, who call themselves Christians, they go like, hey, I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. And they go snoring. And some of them say, hey, Jesus, I don't need to, I don't need to fight anything. Oh, really? So how come God is giving us all the power, all the tools, all the momentum, asking us to fight the enemy? So he gave it to us for us to sit down and watch reruns or ask for more power, more blessings, like a lot of Pentecostals do. Sitting, uh, sitting around asking for more power, more blessings. They, nobody has ever taught them how to fight. They are church members. They are not combatant Christians. They are not disciples because disciples know how to fight because we are called to be resistant army or what is called occupation army. Occupation army is because we are already more than conqueror they will not allow the enemy to take ground. They will enforce the defeat of the enemy. They will also walk in light and in power and they will take more territories. See, that somebody is defeated does not mean that he's down and out. See, a lot of people say, oh, Satan is defeated. Satan is under my feet. And they go relax because nobody taught them warfare. They are just talking. They are quoting scripture. They've never lived it. Satan will hit them and try them. And that's when they wake up. Sometimes that's why God allows spiritual attack because that's the only wake-up call people will receive. So look at it this way. Satan is wicked. People don't know the nature of Satan. All the tragedies you see, all the problems you see, even among Christians, is because of this tragedy. First of all, he will always put us in bondage so that he can have dominion and authority over us. And once you have authority over somebody, you look down on the person, then you can do whatever you like on the person. You can decide to kill the person. You can decide to block his finances or shut him down. You can decide to destroy his marriage. You can destroy his reputation. You can destroy his life. You can destroy his health and wealth. That's why Christians have cancer like everyone else. The first rate is worse in the church than outside the church. You can destroy the family. You can cause tragedy. You can even take the person out of here because they don't know nothing. And if you don't know, you will not flow. And if you don't know, you will not grow. You got to be in the know to be in the flow. My people perish for lack of knowledge, revelation knowledge. Because they have no knowledge, they have gone into captivity. Hosea 4, 6 and Jeremiah say the same thing. See, if you don't understand how the enemy works, you will always be one of the complacent Christians who quote the scriptures and go ahead snoring. So here, I want to give us five cardinal points. Why we must exercise our own dominion, our kingdom dominion power. Otherwise, Satan will not hesitate to exercise his own. In fact, he's already doing it. You don't need to ask him. He's wicked. He's an intruder. He's an interloper. He's a trespasser. He's not invited and he will come and cause mayhem, cause hardship, cause trouble, cause disaster, cause nemesis, cause affliction, cause misery, create problem and issue. And most Christians don't even recognize this, the hand of the enemy in diverse ways because our enemy has many faces and uses many weapons. Yet God has given us not only superior weapons, he has given us authority in his name, authority as his children, authority in the blood, authority in the word of God, authority even as creation of God. Because he gave us dominion when he created us. Let's just go there real quickly for us to see the realms of dominion that God gave us. I'm reading from Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. And it says that God said, let us make men in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the cattle uh, uh, the earth over all the earth and every and over every creeping thing that creeped upon the earth wow and so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Look at the way 
and how God gave us dominion. He gave us dominion, first of all, over the fish of the sea, which is the marine world. Here, if you expand this revelation knowledge, it means over everything that swings with fin. The marine kingdom is given to us. Now, look at the second one. Over the fowl of the air, the atmosphere. The Bible says Satan is the prince of the power of the air. So he gave us the air waves, including your satellites, your TV, your electronic. They all come through the air wave. That's why the enemy can use it. So he gave us the atmosphere, the area of intense spiritual warfare, second heaven, first and second heaven. Now look at whatever he gave us again, uh, the third one, and over every creeping thing that creeped on the earth, first of all, over the cattle. Now, anything that is on the ground, cattle represent animals on the ground, and everything on ground, God gave us authority on the earth realm. And over the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeped upon the earth. So he gave us dominion in four realms here, over the animals that creep on the earth, or the plantation and vegetation, over the earth as a whole, over the air, and over the sea. So he gave us, and also he gave us authority over demonic spirits of all kinds and variety, it doesn't matter. So not only did he give us authority, he also gave us his power in addition. So it's for us to stir up this power and now begin to use it. Now let us see why. And remember, I always say, if you don't use your authority, Satan will use his own. Number one, he gave us authority so that we can enforce our Christ's won victory and Satan's defeat. Number one reason. Spiritual warfare is not fighting for victory. You are fighting from victory and you want to enforce the defeat of the enemy. That somebody has been defeated doesn't mean he will not roam up his ugly head. He will try to insurrect. He will try to resurrect. He will try to come back. Satan does not give up easily. If you don't realize this, you go and realize that oh, Christ has fought the battle. He has won the victory. Yes, but you yourself, what are you doing in your own domain, on your own little corner, on your own warfare? That is the difference. So, first of all, we are occupation army. Occupation army is the army that has already won the victory. But they are stationed there so that they can prevent insurrection or further rebellion and enforce a post-war treaty for peace. So if you don't, Satan is rebellious, he's recalcitrant, he's unrelenting or what is called relentless and he doesn't give up. So if you know the nature of the enemy, you cannot relax. Remember the old song that we always sing. Christians seek not yet repose. Hear thy guardian angels say thou art in the midst of foes. Watch and pray. So if you don't watch and pray and fight your battle, Satan will use his authority and reverse your blessings and create hell on earth for you, make your life miserable and can even take you out of here. So you must know who you are as a result. You must know whose you belong. You must know what is in you and you must know what you have. And I will explain. Now, if you understand John 13, if you start reading from one, he said Jesus knowing who he is and that he is from God, that he comes from God and that he's going to his destination and God has given everything into his hands. Now you'd understand identity, originality before you understand your authority and then your destiny. Satan comes to fight the process of your destiny. 
So he understands destiny. That's why he fights destiny and fights the plan and purpose of God. And without warfare and your confession and making decree and declaration and fighting your spiritual battle as a resistant occupation army more than conqueror, then you'll be sitting there and Satan will take advantage. So if you don't understand your identity because your originality is tied to your origin, Jesus knowing that he came from God, that is his origin. And his identity is taken from his origin. So you're a child of God. You come from God. You belong to Jesus Christ. You know who you are. You know what you carry. You know who you belong. You know what you have, the greater one. You even know what you can do because you have greater weapon. And if you don't do, know that, you won't understand this process. In other words, you have a superior weapon. The name of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ. The word of God, which is the sword of the Spirit. Instrument of praying and fasting. The fire of the Holy Spirit. The blood of Jesus Christ. All the instruments, including the flaming sword of the Lord. The east wind. The west wind. They are wind, the breath of the Lord. You have also things like the sledgehammer of the Lord. There are several, the chainsaw of the Lord, the border of the Lord, the brimstone, the hailstone, the thunder, the lightning. There are so many instruments other than the one the enemy might be used to or become resistant to. But if you don't fight, you will know the enemy will mess up your life and mess up your destiny, mess up your plan, mess up your God's giving ordained plan or vision or things you want to accomplish as far as destiny is concerned. So don't be complacent. Don't think that, oh, warfare is not for me. It's for those in deliverance. It's for everybody. Every Christian is supposed to be combatant. Every Christian is supposed to be a warrior. Every Christian is supposed to be a prayer intercessor, worshiping intercessor. Every Christian, just like every demon know how to fight, every Christian is supposed to be a fighter because the Bible says the Lord is a man of war. He's a warrior. He has ne never lost any battle. So is his children. The Bible says, as he is, so are we in this world. A servant is not greater than his master. Jesus fought the battle for all of us. So we have to enforce our own victory in our own domain, in our own corner, in our own place in our own ministry, in our own life, in our own family, in our own endeavor, in our own business, in our own health, in our own relationship, in everything God has ordained for us, we need to fight to get it. Let me tell you the truth. Gospel truth for that matter. God do not give you what you deserve. He doesn't even give you what you desire. He gives you what you demand through prayer, through battle. Anything that you cannot fight for, you cannot gain. Your destiny is worth the fight. It's worth the investment. It's worth the sacrifice. It's worth the victory. Apostle Paul said, I love more than they all. Why? He didn't go and relax. And God that has done it all. Jesus has saved, it, uh, saved us. And that's why we don't need to fight. I see people talk nonsense. I look at them. I look at their life. It's messed up. And I know why. Because they think this thing is a piece of cake. Look. God didn't call us to a comfortable life. He called us to a conformable life, to conform to the image of his son. Jesus Christ is the fighter. See, he came the first time to save us. That was why he rode in a donkey. Go back to the book of Revelation. The second time he's coming, he's coming on a white horse, which means speed and war and victory. So, child of God, if you don't understand this, that... Uh, as he is, so are we. And he must, we must occupy till he come. We call ourselves resistant and occupation army. Of course, more than conqueror. Number two, or number, the second reason. If you don't use your God-ordained authority and dominion power, Satan will use his own. As a matter of fact, as we talk now, he's already using his own. If you don't plant the right seed by design, weeds will grow by default. Nature do not allow vacuum. If you don't take what belongs to you, someone else will take it, become an imposter, whether you like it or not. 
just because of your passivity and docility and liturgy and your moribund nature. And that's why witches always complain that Christians have no power because most of them have not been taught to fight. Most of them have been taught to be complacent. Most of them have been taught to take it the easy, lazy way. Most of them have been taught to, you know, not to fight that God has done it all as if God will come and put food in their mouth. Now, if you don't understand this, you will be like the majority of Christians. Actually, 98% of satanic arrows work because people do not use their weapons. Because it's one thing to have the weapon, it's another thing to use it. And it's another thing to know how to use it. If you don't know how to use a gun, you can even kill yourself by your own friendly fire. Why? Because the gun has different gadgets, including safety lock. Some of them even have telescope or a scope whereby you look at your target before you fire. Some of them have different way it is designed. In fact, you have to be taught how to shoot so that you won't, miss, so that you won't waste your bullet. So don't think that spiritual warfare comes naturally. You got to be taught. A lot of people have never gone through boot camp. So if you don't know how to use your weapon if you are not taught if you don't use your god-given authority and the array of a momentum and weapons that god has given you to defeat the enemy or enforce the victory and defeat of the enemy you will always be crying and that's what happened to a lot of christians okay now you see this child of god in psalms 91 verse 13 and Luke 10 19. I can say that of it. The Lord says He's giving us authority and dominion to trample upon scorpions and serpents and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt us. So in the Old Testament, say you shall tread upon the adder and the young lion who that trap upon. Adder is a dangerous scorpion. So you will tread on it, in other words, you march over them, you squash them like a bug. But most Christians don't. They don't even know what to do. I see this all the time in deliverance. People calling you, oh, what do I do? Oh, there's a, a, a vulture in my porch. What do I do? Oh, there's an owl this midnight. What am I going to do? Oh, prophet. I'm like, exercise your authority. Speak to it. Cause it. Cause the wish to die. Destroy the silver cord, cut it off. Decree by fire that whoever that is in that monitoring spirit or tracking spirit is doing the wrong thing, is trespassing into your property. It's not time to pray, it's time to take authority, it's time to walk in dominion. See, when the enemy comes to rape your wife and your children, it's not time to pray, it's time to take authority, it's time to take your gun or your weapon and blow his brains out. But people don't think that way. Every little thing, look, you don't rebuke God. When the enemy comes, don't go to God. Go and use your power and fire and your tools. But you pray to God. But you rebuke the enemy and intruder and the infiltrator and demonic cohorts and any intruder or trespasser or infiltrator or afflictor. That is the way it's organized. People keep on telling me, oh, I'm praying, I'm praying. I say, no. There's a difference between taking authority, exercising your dominion power, and prayer. You generate power during prayer, but you exercise authority when occasion demands it. In fact, the Bible says pray without season. Take authority because if you don't take it, the enemy will use his own, whether you like it or not, whether you believe it or not, whether you know it or not. Satan doesn't take permission to attack people. That's why people cry all the time. So, God has said that. Now, look at another thing. Satan will always exercise his dark powers to truncate people's destiny, the plan and purpose of God. And there are children of God. Good prophecies have been given to them. They see what God wants to do in their life in the dream. But it doesn't manifest in the natural. It doesn't manifest in their life. It doesn't manifest in their ministry. It doesn't manifest in their family. It doesn't manifest in their relationship. It doesn't manifest in their finances. It doesn't manifest in their health. They are miserable actually. So, if you don't know this, if you don't know how to fight, you already pray. 
waiting to happen. Christian casualties become casualties of war. Or casual Christians become Christian casualties. That's the right way to say it. So if you are casual, lackadaisical, easy, lazy, whatever you get, you take. Don't blame God because it's easy to blame God. Oh God, why did you allow it? <laughs> you didn't pray. You didn't fast. Nobody taught you warfare. They only told you, oh, the blood of Jesus has covered you. And you quote scripture and, and be going. You never applied it. You never spent time praying. You never wore. You never did mid midnight vigil. Um, you know, you never went into spiritual warfare. You never, let me tell you, if you just read your Bible, pray and go and eat and relax, you're already in trouble. You're a sleeping dog. Yes. There's more to these things than just, oh, I quoted scripture. Oh, I prayed. I went to church. Oh, I fasted. There's more. Sometimes God will shield us from these things until we are mature to handle it, until we learn warfare and learn dominion and how to really exercise authority so that we can walk in our full covenant victory, covenant rights and privileges in Christ and covenant breakthrough and miracle of turnaround so that we can maximize our potential. So child of God, number three, reason why you must exercise remember i say must i didn't say maybe maybe not or probably no i didn't use or if no i say why you must so this is a must this word is warfare believe it or not number three reason is the devil doesn't grant deliverance so i see a lot of people they will tell you things like oh you know uh once you are saved, you are delivered. Once you hear the word of God, you are delivered. Or Jesus has done it all. Or I apply the blood. I see all those. You know what they don't know? They don't know the nature of the enemy. Oh, I don't believe in this war first off. Okay. You think it, what you believe changes the devil? You think your belief, the devil cares about your belief? He'll come and destroy you. In fact, he comes through the dream. And once he pollutes you in the dream, attacks you in the dream, he uses it to put you in bondage so that he can have authority and further dominion over you and reinforce demonic wicked covenant that perpetuates causes and struggle and defeat and resistance and opposition and demonic delays so that destiny will be truncated. So if you don't use your authority, Satan does not grant deliverance. The Bible says he opened not the doors of the prison for his enemies. But when he came to Jesus, the Bible says he came to set the captives free. But you have to line up with Jesus. You have to use his tools, his authority that he gave us. The right to exercise power. The right to walk in dominion. To walk, the right to walk in kingdom power and breakthrough. A miracle of turnaround so that you can walk your inherit in your inheritance so that you can walk in your covenant rights and privileges in christ so that you can walk in perpetual victory not today you are looking for miracle the next day you don't believe anymore god doesn't want us to chase miracle signs and wonder he's supposed for us or intended for you and i to become a walking miracle that we attract miracle we actually carry miracle because we carry his power we are his kingdom citizens we are his children we have dominion not just because we are blood bought blood washed blood covenant blood protected and blood empowered children of god but he gave us everything that pertains to this life and godliness so if we don't win if we don't walk in victory it's not god's fault it's our fault remember kenny Hagin. jesus appeared to him and he came to answer Jesus. He was discussing, having conversation with the Lord. And the demon, like a monkey, was standing between him and Kenehagin, the Lord, between the Lord, between the Lord and Kenehagin. And was jumping up and down like the usual monkey, distracting the, uh, the, uh, the discussion they were having. And Kenehagin was wondering, say, Lord, you are here. And demon is here, jumping up and down before you. And you are talking to me. And he's disrupting us. The Lord did not do anything. The Lord kept quiet. Until Kenehagin now 
commanded the demon with holy anger. Immediately he commanded the demon to leave and crash. The demon ran away. Kinnegan started asking the Lord, say, but Lord, you are here. You didn't do anything when this, this, this demon is messing the whole thing up. <laughs> the Lord said, didn't you read in my word that I've given you the authority, that I've given you the dominion, I've given you the kingdom power to dominate, to rule, to reign, to overcome, to walk in victory against the enemy. He said, you are my body. I can't do anything if you don't exercise your power. Ken Hagen said he learned a great lesson. I was reading it in his book several years ago, maybe 20, 25 years ago. His book on spiritual authority, authority of the believer. So, if you don't use your authority, Satan do not grant deliverance. And I say it this way, Satan does not grant deliverance without a fight. This is the whole essence of spiritual warfare. So you have to take it by fire and by force. Since this is the only language he understands. In other words, Satan understands only the language of force and power. You are useless if you are powerless. Wow. From the time of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom suffereth violence. Men and women of violence take it by force, take it by fire. It talks about spiritual aggression, combatant mindset, militant against the kingdom of the devil, against the kingdom that will hinder and prevent you, the dark kingdom that causes all the problems. So spiritual warfare is that you enforce light, you enforce power, you enforce the victory, you enforce your breakthrough, you enforce your increase, you enforce your financial dominance or independence. You enforce your health. You enforce the fact that Satan, you can't mess with my family under my watch. You cannot mess with my finances. You cannot mess with my health. You cannot mess with my ministry. Not under my watch. I can't be here and you do whatever you like. Just like that monkey was messing things up when the Lord showed up. Or the Kenehikin took authority. Nothing happened. A lot of people are still complacent. They are still sleeping in their spiritual doldrum. So this is very, very key. And you may ask me another question. Remember, he said the kingdom is not in wars, but in power. But did you notice today, most of the preaching you have, there's no demonstration of power. There's no demonstration of power. People don't even know the difference. That's why when Jesus appeared to the scene, when he laid hand on the sick and then commanded the devil, they said, what kind of doctrine is that? They thought it was doctrine. They said, what is new doctrine is this? Because... They didn't see anything like that. Today, the same thing. People think that casting a demon is a big deal. It's not. But because we are not doing it, we don't even know the difference. So you have to take dominion in different areas. Now, number four, child of God, is a big one. And I want you to listen attentively. Weakness attracts bullies. So not being powerful is not an option. Weakness and being a sissy and a wimp is not an option. You must be strong. You must be powerful. You must be loaded. You must have the strength and build your spiritual stamina and endurance and your inner technical resistance to withstand. The Bible says if your strength fails you in the days of adversity, your strength is small. God, you hear me say, does not really care much how big you grow. He does not care how fat you grow. He does not care how large you grow. He cares much more importantly how strong you grow. Because he knows the storm is coming. He knows the devil is coming. He knows the situation is coming. He knows circumstance is coming. It's not a question of if. It's a question of when. The evil day is coming. And if you are not trained, if you are not prepared, if you are not packaged, if you are not ready, you'll be swept off. Because you were unprepared. You be caught off guard. And that's what the enemy is doing to a lot of Christians. So here, you discover that once somebody is weak, even in school, 
the bully is always attracted to people they think is a wimp, is a weakling, or who can fight, who can fend for it themselves, who can even, you know, muster a blow. The bully will pick up on them. Well, that's what Satan does. He's the bully in the spirit realm. He will come to your house uninvited. He will cause disease. He will cause sickness. He will intrude. If you see the kind of call I receive every day, people will be in their house, things moving. They see a presence or a shadow. Doors moving. Hearing footsteps. It's always one thing or the other. Sometimes evil breaths will just jump into the room and so on because people are not sensitive in this thing. Sometimes you see some roaches come out and they won't run. That's how you know he's monitoring spirit. They'll be looking at you like a human being. Because all that ordinary animal, when they see a human being, they say, glory, man, they run. Even a lion, the first time they see a human being, they run because they say, glory, man, before they recoup and come back. So any creature, whether a rat, a mice, a roach, it doesn't matter. A dog, a cow, a cat, if they see you and stand there and be looking at you like a human being, they are not ordinary. That is a monitoring spirit. In fact, it's better to be saved than to be sorry. It's better to be aggressive, kill it, before you, you know what it is going on. Because if you don't attack, they will attack. And if you don't prevent what they are doing, prevention is better than cure, then they will attack you and then you start doing damage control. Medicine after death. Sometimes some of these things are not easy to reverse. So what you're going to do is that you have to be strong. You see, even where we talk about warfare chapter, Ephesians 4. I think I have to read it by the grace of God right now, right here. Ephesians 4. People talk about putting on the whole armor of God. Six. Uh, uh, I mean to say, let's fast forward to six. People talk about putting on the whole armor of God. But child of God, do you know that you cannot put that armor until you are strong? I will read it to you because people skip things and read here and there. And I'm reading Ephesians 6. Look at 10. 10 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Wow. In other words, before you put on the armor, you have to be strong, otherwise you collapse under the armor. And 11 now say, put on the whole armor of God that ye might be able to stand against the wise of the devil. But 10 say, finally, be strong, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So weakness will attract bully and that bully is Satan. So if you don't want to be strong, if you don't want to fortify yourself, if you don't want to build your spiritual stamina, your spiritual strength, if you don't want to be a soldier and be a skillful combatant soldier, if you don't want to go through combatant life and become militant instead of just church member and pew woman, church jumper, church hopper, you begin to acquire some knowledge. And begin to train yourself even if your church don't have such facilities or don't have intercessory group or warfare prayer band or don't even do deliverance because this is one of the areas a lot of churches lack so if you are not taught how to do it you do the wrong thing you start crying when the enemy shows up you don't even know what to do because you are not trained you, you don't even know what to look for these things are not caught they are taught before they are caught if you are not trained, you will not reign. Training is for reigning. So this is how to build yourself. You build your spiritual strength by the Holy Ghost, which is prayer, and the Word of God, which is the sword of the Spirit. You feed on what you grow on. You grow on what you feed on. The Word of God is the spirit food. Just like you eat physical food for physical fitness and energy, and power and strength to do your daily work then you can go further to build your spiritual muscle that is praying in the spirit praying in tongue praying the word of god but be strong in the lord you are strong in the lord when you meditate on his word when you put the word inside you when you rehearse the word when you speak the word to your situation to your mountain 
when you build yourself in by memorizing the scripture and making it part of you you become what you believe before you release what you conceive for what you achieve that is the way to become strong in the lord you gotta be strong in the world people are empty they are not full of the word when they pray i listen to their prayer i eavesdrop i discover that there is no word in their prayer their word is empty their word is based on complaint their prayer is just complaint here and there they don't pray god's word back to god when you pray god's word back to god god has no alternative but to answer your prayer because he cannot deny his word. He has elevated his word above all his name. So, child of God, strength is very important to God. You know, your physical strength. I'm not talking about ordinary strength or human energy or human kana energy. No, I'm talking about the God kind of strength, the God kind of power, the God kind of dominion and authority comes by the word of God which is the sword of the spirit. So, and then let's look at number five, the final one. The final one say, you execute justice and vengeance. In other words, avenge the enemy when you have power and exercise authority. The devil is lawless and he's an outlaw. So you need your authority execution to put him in his place and at bay so that you can walk in victory as you deliver others also with your God-given authority. I want to tell you this child of God that have you ever seen something and you are so unhappy like oh God is not fair. That's a child of God. Why is he suffering? Well if you don't have what it takes to help that person or even help yourself, you don't even know what your left and your right. You think you know because you're in church. Most of the churches don't teach these things. I want to show you something. I think it's in Isaiah. Whereby God made a powerful statement telling you that this Bible is a legal book. It's, you know, God is such a way that he's our judge, he's our lawgiver, he's our lawmaker. And he's the one that make it come to pass. He fulfills it. Because his word has the power, or should I say the backup power, and the presence to bring it to pass, to bring it to conclusion. That's why his word never fails. So if you understand the power behind God's word, that his word do not fail or falter, you now begin to understand that God will not fail you, he will not fail me, he will always execute what he promised and God will never fail and he will never falter. He said, being born again, not of corruptible, but incorruptible seed of the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. So his word is incorruptible. I want to read Isaiah, child of God, 49, a very common place in deliverance. I'm reading from verse 24. It says, But thus said the Lord, Even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with him that contendeth with thee, and I will save thy children. Wow. Now, if you back up to 24, it said, Shall the prey be taken from the mighty? Or the lawful captive delivered? See, some people are lawful captive. They don't even know their left and their right. They don't even know that the devil is technical. He's legal. You hear me say the devil is not just a liar. He's a lawyer. He can use technicality and legality to neutralize your prayer on technical grounds. And you won't get results. And you start blaming God. Because there are spiritual laws of execution. See, when you want to avenge your enemy, when you want to do justice, when you say, why is not fair? That is a child of God. Why will he suffer? Jesus saw this in women that are loose. 
He saw a woman bent over for 18 years. Nobody was doing anything. Even the doctors could not help. She was a covenant daughter. And religion said, Oh, why will you do the deliverance? We don't heal people on a Sabbath day. Jesus said, Wait a minute. Ought not this daughter of Abraham, who Satan has bound for these 18 years, be delivered? Wow! They were arguing about technicalities and legalities of scripture. Forget that this woman has been banned. A daughter of Abraham. A covenant child of God. That's why I said, remember we said Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Meaning the power of covenant. Remember the other time I said covenant is more powerful than prayer. Well, if this is a daughter of Abraham and nobody had done anything, Jesus had mercy or compassion and then rewarded the daughter of Abraham. Say, you're a covenant daughter. You're not supposed to go through what you're going through. You're not supposed to be oppressed. You're not supposed to be sick. You're not supposed to be poor and wretched and paycheck to paycheck and, uh, 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 and be more, uh, morose and, uh, uh, and be defeated. Jesus said, this sickness, I can't tolerate this. I have to avenge this daughter of Abraham. I have to do something about it. See, child of God is in everything. Margaret Thatcher says something powerful. He said, Nobody would have helped the man that was broken down and then destroyed by thieves if the good Samaritan had only good intention. He said nobody would have heard about good Samaritan if he only had good intention. That man would have died. Yet he loves God. Yet he loved the person that has problems. But he avenged the injustice, what the thieves did to a man, beat him to death. Even a pastor, a priest came that way and went the other way. But a good Samaritan who had what it takes, he had the compassion, but he also had the money. He helped the man, put him in an inn, took care of him, paid the bills and moved. How did he do that? How did he rectify the injustice? Because he had money. So some people who talk trash, I say, oh, why are you preaching prosperity? Let me tell you, the gospel involves prosperity, involves healing, involves deliverance, involves breakthrough, involves walking in your inheritance and your covenant blessings in Christ. People coin the word prosperity gospel. There's no prosperity gospel in the Bible. Even the people who think they are speaking the truth are wrong because the word they are using is wrong. You can never find prosperity gospel in the whole Bible. It's the gospel of the kingdom. And the gospel of the kingdom involves prosperity, involves victory involves breakthrough involves working in your inheritance involves working in power and dominion or working in demonstration of god's kingdom through deliverance so they go together if the good samaritan didn't have financial deliverance he would be incapacitated to even help that man one of the things about poverty is that they can't even help themselves not to talk about another person yet the people who need prosperity the more or the most, are the people who criticize prosperity of the kingdom. So if God can't take care of himself, why are we uh, uh, his children, his covenant children, why are we worshiping him? So it doesn't matter whether it's healing or deliverance or miracle for that woman or financial breakthrough or miracle of turnaround, everything is in the kingdom. That's why God says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things. And all, all these blessings and breakthrough or miracle or surplus prosperity will be given, added unto you. It's just an addition. So if you don't execute justice and vengeance, you'll be seeing things go by under your watch and you cringe. How do you feel when offering plate is going around for the work of God or for the things of God and you couldn't give? Inside me, I cringe. I said, Lord, why can't you give me money? I'll give. And do you know God has answered that prayer? 
Yeah, God has answered that prayer big time. One time a pastor in, in Texas preached it. And I was there. I went to his team to preach. So I went to worship on our center in that church. And I'll close with this. So the man was making a statement that, oh, one day he will give a tithe of a million dollars. I say, MM. Do you know when their church started having problems, when there was flooding in Houston, unusual flooding in Houston, I said, Pastor, I made a pledge, but I didn't want to say it because I didn't have the money. I didn't want to say it openly because I'm afraid I may not fulfill it and I don't want to promise what I don't want to do and I will be in bondage because the Bible says if you vow a vow, make sure you fulfill it otherwise God has no pleasure in fools. So I didn't open my mouth. So the man, when I called him a couple of years later, I said, Pastor, I know you people are doing uh, the building fund. He said, yes. I said, how far is it? He said, oh, the flood took away everything and that they relocated and they couldn't do anything. I said, okay. I said, Pastor, how much is the new rent in the makeshift church that you have? He said, the Every month, they pay $1,000. I said, Pastor, put me in. I said, I will send you $1,000. This man broke down. If you saw the way he danced and did gymnastic, I know how he was on the other side of the phone. He couldn't believe it. He quickly gave me the church information and everything. And the next morning, it was on a Saturday, on a Monday, I went to wear Fargo and wired him actually check. I put the check in the account he gave me, a thousand dollar. I want to come to a point whereby I want to give a million dollar tie to things of God. This man was so happy. He kept on thanking me. I said, no, thank God. It was a promise I made. So if the good Samaritan only have good intention, you know, when you try to preach these things, all the religious spirit and tradition will rise up. One of my friends told me, oh, I just want to be comfortable. I say, you are a very selfish man. You are wicked. So you are thinking about yourself. You are not thinking about the gospel going throughout the world. You don't think about the orphans. You don't think about the widows. You don't think about the motherless. You only think about yourself and your family. This is the whole problem of American dream. Me, little Johnny, my dog, my wife, and my two-car garage. Look, what God prepared for you in his kingdom is far greater than American dream or any dream. God's dream for your life is, is greater than anything else your mind has even ever conceived. You don't know where God will take you. So if you don't want to be an agent of change, an agent that will bring justice, an agent that will bring prosperity, an agent that will avenge the enemy, and rectify what the enemy has been doing in all areas in financial arena in health in deliverance setting people free in building god's kingdom because true prosperity god's kingdom will reign will be expanded will increase so child of god this is the five cardinal reasons why you must exercise dominion let's recapitulate the first reason is that you must enforce your christ won victory and Satan's defeat. The second is that if you don't use your authority by design, Satan will always use his own by default. Number three, the third reason is that the devil doesn't grant deliverance without a fight or spiritual warfare. Number four reason is that weakness attracts bully, therefore you must be strong. And then finally, number five is that you must execute justice and vengeance against your enemy when you walk in power and exercise your authority. God bless you, Dr. Zoh.